Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today I have a brand new monitor from Godox. And this monitor actually has something special. You can control some of the functions of your camera with this monitor, like taking photos, recording, zooming in and more. So let's talk about it. The Sony FX3 has a red tally light right here on the camera. So you'll see whenever I hit the record button, the camera instantaneously starts recording. And to cut, I just hit the button here on the monitor again. So here it is, this is it. This is the Godox GM6S. It's the first monitor I've had from Godox, but I've been using their lighting for years. It is a 4K touchscreen monitor. It's 5.5 inch and it does have five little custom function buttons here at the top and you can program these to be whatever you want them to be. A 5.5 inch monitor is great for handheld shooting on a small compact rig like this, but it's also really, really helpful on the gimbal as well. So generally, whenever I'm flying around on the Ronin, I like to have this Tilta support arm in the back, which also can control the gimbal and everything but that's what makes this monitor really handy is that i can just pop it right here on the back it has this included adjustable arm which can swivel it can tilt and i keep it just tight enough to where it stays in place but it doesn't move around for whenever i'm shooting but whenever you need to get like a high angle or something like that you can just tilt the monitor down you have a nice clear image so that way I'm not always trying to see what's on this little screen here. Plus I can just apply a LUT to this monitor and see what the color is going to basically kind of look like whenever I'm going into my editing program or the editor is going in to edit this footage. So that's really cool. The Godox GM6S is ultra bright. It has 1200 nits of brightness, which is great for outdoor use. It also comes with a collapsible sun hood and sun hood cage to quickly and easily detach this monitor hood. It can accept 4K and 4K DCI and displays them in 1920 by 1080p. It is an IPS monitor, which means you can get 160 degree viewing angle from this monitor. And there's only 180 degrees you can look at a screen. So I would say that's pretty good. The kit comes with three 32 inch HDMI cables, mini, micro, and full size. It also has a tilting cold shoe mount that has a little locking pin designed specifically for the three locking quarter 20 threaded holes on the monitor. You can power this monitor through USB-C. So with your power banks, you can plug it into the wall with a DC cable and it has DC output power as well. It also has 4K HDMI output and a headphone output and then the remote port, although those cables are not included. You can add on a camera control cable for your specific camera and I'll list the model numbers here for you. The control cables are 24 inches long so you can easily use them on a gimbal like this. So you have five custom buttons at the top here that you can program to 18 different functions, whatever you want. I like keeping one of the five custom functions set to false color. This is a really cool tool for exposing your image. So you can see as I rotate the neutral density filter, you can see the highlights kind of darken. And as the image gets overexposed, you can see where it actually turns to orange and then eventual red whenever you get too much light in on the image. That's one of my favorite exposure tools besides using a typical waveform, which it also has that. Another cool feature about this monitor is you can actually preview your log footage in color of how it's gonna look like in whatever your editing program is using the LUTs capability in this monitor. So you can hold 25 different LUTs in this monitor so let's go over how to install them so somebody recently asked me what a LUT was because I just talk about it regularly in my videos like it's a normal thing but a LUT is a lookup table that's what it stands for so a lookup table just basically applies a quick color grade to see what your log footage is going to look like in your post-production or your editing program so you can have a bunch of different LUTs in here I think this one holds actually 25 different LUTs and you load those up through the SD card here in the bottom and then you 
you can actually have 25 different looks on your image whenever you're shooting in logs. So really, really cool. So I'll show you how to import those LUTs and let's keep shooting. All right, so let's go ahead and get those LUTs installed on the monitor. First, you're gonna need to get the LUTs put onto your SD card and go ahead and drop that in the monitor. To import the LUTs into the monitor, you're gonna go under the main menu and go under LUT. We're gonna go under LUT manage and hit import. Now we can see all the LUTs that I have loaded onto the monitor. So we're gonna grab this first one here the Phantom LUT Ice Blue A7S III and import that. Now we're just gonna select the rest of these LUTs and import them as well. All right, once we have all the LUTs loaded, now we can go under LUT Load and select which one that we want to preview. Let's say we are gonna use this tungsten one from Phantom LUTs and we're gonna select that. All right, so let's take a look at the difference now. So this is what it looks like in S-Log3, very flat, no contrast. And now we're gonna add the LUT with the shortcut function here. And you can see that now we have nice, vivid, bright colors here. So now we can actually see what our image is gonna look like in our editing program. Another cool feature of the LUT capabilities is that you're able to go under LUT here and hit this compared button. And now you can see what your image looked like before in S-Log3. And now you can see what your image looks like with all the color and saturation and everything added to the image. So really, really cool. And to exit out of that compared view, you just hit the X button here. All right, so we're happy with this frame. Now we can hit record and the camera is rolling. The results that you have with the camera control functions are gonna vary depending on what type of camera you have, whether you have a Canon or a Nikon or a Fuji or whatever. I have a Sony FX3 right here that I'm using. I've also tested it out on the A7R3 and the results can be kind of limited depending on what kind of camera you have. I'm not sure about other brand manufacturers, but they make a different cable for every camera manufacturer that you may run into. To access the camera control functions, you go under under system and go down to camera control and enable it here. So after you enable camera control in the menu, you can actually swipe over from the right side here and all your camera control functions will be right there. So from the top, you have a camera shutter function like this and the camera will take a photo whenever you hit this button. If you have it under high speed, it'll take two or three photos. Next, you have the record function here and as you can see, whenever I hit that, my camera switches out of photo mode and went right into video mode and started recording into cut. I just hit this and I'll switch right back over to photography mode. Now I'll change the camera over to video mode. All right, so from the top, we have the photo button, which does not work in video mode. The record button here, you'll see the tally light comes on instantaneously whenever I tap it. So very, very quick functioning with that. Next, this is supposed to autofocus, but it doesn't work for my particular camera. Next, this is supposed to be a manual focus, so you can focus in or focus out, but with my particular camera, it functions as a zoom. So if you have a power zoom lens, you can zoom in on your lens, or if you don't have a power zoom lens, you can actually use clear image zoom and you can digitally crop in on your image using this. So the monitor is also supposed to be able to control the ISO, the aperture and the shutter, but those functions don't work with this cable and my particular camera. Let me know down in the comments below if you have a different brand of camera and you get the cable that goes for your camera because I'm interested to know whose camera works with all the functions. I have function three set to focus assist and this is just really nice for catching focus. It adds a little bit of colored accent around the part that you have in critical focus. So as I move the focus of the lens, the different red parts will move to the area that I have in the sharpest focus. So super helpful. You can also adjust your focus assist settings here under this focus assist tab. You can change the color of the area in focus and the sensitivity. So if you like a lot of focus points on here for whenever you're racking focus like this, then this could be something really useful for you. Or maybe you just need to, you know, really know what's in focus and you can see how the individual leaves are lit up here on the plant I have in focus. And then as I rack out, you can see that those farther areas become in focus. 
I have function four set to zebras and function five set to waveform. This is two other exposure tools that I find really helpful, but the settings of each of these will depend on what picture profile you're shooting in and what camera you're shooting on. There's also a swiping shortcut just for the waveform in the bottom right corner of the screen. I think this is a really solid option for a camera monitor. Not only does it have a really sharp image, but you're able to load on 25 different LUTs and be able to see what your image is gonna look like in post-processing. Plus it has a ton of professional tools in it like waveform, false color, histograms, vector scopes, all kinds of things for exposing and even some really cool things like the camera control functions, which I would like to see expanded upon in maybe a firmware upgrade or something like that where I can take full control of the camera from right here on the monitor. So whenever I'm on a gimbal and the monitor is super far back here behind the camera, I'm able to actually control all the functions of the camera. Other than that, for a little over $300, I think this is a fantastic option and you'd be very, very happy with it. It has all the cables you need. It has the monitor mount, a sun hood, and it's super, super bright. 1200 nits of brightness is more than enough than you'd need in most sunny situations. All right guys, that does it for me today. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe for more filmmaking gear, tips, and tutorials just like this one. As always, shoot for the stars and I'll see you in the next one.